everyone. <laughs> Hi, it's me and Roscoe. <laughs> oh, that was my sister Rachel Jojo. Well, welcome and happy holidays. Uh, welcome to another American Peaceful Presents Free Friday webinar. I am Shelly Sanchez Carroll. This is Roscoe. And uh, today we're going to talk about on the air, um, teaching audio record with audio recording tools and apps. And you can find everything, including your certificate, at bit.ly ELT links. And I'll go ahead and put that in the um, here. Um, we're going to be, um, I'm going to change things a little with that, so just to let you know. So the upcoming year, um, I'm going to put everything, uh, it's still going to be in the same place, but it's going to be through Listly. So that's one of uh, the things that we're going to do that might be a little bit different, is that um, Listly works really good with Live Finders, so, um, and it's so easy to keep up with. So all the resources are, from now on, just going to be with Listly's. <laughs> But it'll still be in the live uh, binder. Um, it's so much easier, and you can crowdsource it very easily, Peggy. So that's why I decided to do that. And it takes a lot less time to bookmark things through Listly than it does for any other uh, bookmarking tool that I've seen. So um, yes, I am. I'm dropping pearl trees because the annoying ads. Um, when you go to them, they have this big pop-up, and it, it just um, hides all the pearls. So that's what's kind of upsetting about that. I wish they would stop doing that, but oh well. <laughs> I think it confuses people because it keeps doing that. So um, there's many, over 100 audio tools that I've bookmarked actually in a Listly. There's about 102 of them. Um, and there's some great tools out there. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today, because we did one on listening before, so this is a bit different. This is how to carry a whole entire project out. If you want to do podcasting, if you want to do teledramas, if you want to do radio shows, anything like that, then we're going to have to go and um, have certain types of formats and stuff that you go through for that. And so that's what I want to do in this webinar, is really show you how you can get students to speak and think about your topics by having them take what they just learned, whether they just read it in a book or a chapter, and then they can apply that in a real world kind of drama um, that they produce with just their voice. And the great thing about when you have that voice project, it's still storytelling and everything like that, it's still engaging and interactive. Um, but the great thing is that I think it's very personal. I love, I just got my students to do this from uh, Spain and stuff. Hold on just a sec. Roscoe's being a little a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> um, but it's definitely something that your students can easily do. And it works for all ages, which is what I found. But one of the great things about it is um, it, it's, a little, it's better to have this um, and easier with parents. Um, so if the parents are very uncomfortable about their children being online. A lot of times they'll let you record the voice and they're okay with that. And I found that out with my German parents because they didn't really, uh, weren't too comfortable being online, but they were okay with them get, having their voices recorded. So this is um, a good way to introduce them to online tools and have my students out there. Um, the great thing about it too is they can get comments from others. People can use this podcast. Um, they can remix it and other things. And for them, they can go back and they can learn things. For language learners, it's very important because they're recording their voice. They can hear their accent. And I found, because when they record, I found a lot of times they really would redo it again and again. They'd say, teacher, no, I want, uh, I need to make this sound better. I need to sound more like a native speaker or something. And it helped them. I, it was a great way to motivate them to keep practicing and practicing and practicing. And they didn't, uh, I didn't have to ask them to do it for homework. They just did it. So it was, it was a great way to do things um, because they really wanted to help with that. But there's so many things that you can do. Um, and this is the process that we're going to talk about. This is the process I go through. So first, there's always the brainstorming. And today, I just sent out a post of 50 plus tools. Uh, apps, mobile apps, everything, because it's so much easier to do it with your mobile device these days. So 
um, how to brainstorm, and, and you can do all of that with your brainstorming um, on, on your mobile device as well. You can do it on a sheet of paper, or you can do that also um, on the computer. So there's lots of ways you can have them brainstorm. Do the research, because a lot of times when they do a radio show or, or a podcast or something like that, they have to do research. Um, recording, and then we're going to go through the editing process and broadcasting as well. Uh, broadcasting is basically publishing your work online so others can hear it. So that's what makes an audio project. That's the difference between an audio project and a podcast. A podcast means that it has an RSS. It's something that's ongoing. Um, so people can actually subscribe. It's like a blog, but it's sort of like but you can have new shows, and there's different things you can do. So if you wanted to do something where it was ongoing, uh, people could subscribe to it very easily, and they automatically get to it if you have an RSS, and that makes it a uh, podcast. But those podcasts can have very different things that you'll be doing. Um, uh, in the podcast, you can have interviews. You can do the news. Your students can say the news. They can post personal reflections, like, for example, if they just read something. And I use a lot of times um, the example of Mr. Darcy because there's so many things about Pride and Prejudice out there. They've come out with so many great tools. But they could go on the, or they could talk, for example, they just read Anne Rice's novel, Interview with the Vampire, and they could go back and they could say, wow, I really enjoyed this part, or I don't really think that's realistic. Or they could say, I really didn't like this character. So there's a lot of things they can do with reflections. They can debate things. So one person can say, oh, I really believe this is the way that it should have gone in the novel or this is the way it shouldn't have. Um, they can do reviews. They can say, if you really like Anne Rice's, I mean, if you really like an Interview with the Vampire, then you'll love this one as well. Maybe it's um, Twilight or something like that. If you really love Harry Potter, you're going to love Window the Worst Wizard. <laughs> Um, they can do role plays. They can pretend to be characters. They can give announcements, um, and they can do radio shows, uh, which is a lot of fun. My students love doing radio shows, so that's something that we get them to do. To do storytelling, audio guides, journals. There's so many things you can do. There's like a hundred different projects you can do with this alone. So you would have uh, projects endless throughout the year. So let's go through the brainstorming process. What is it, the brainstorming process? Well, before you just do an audio cast, and you can do it. You can do something very quick and simple. Um, what I used to do with my students is I would get um, the audio to, oh, from any of my, ah, do I have it here? No, it's not my iPad mini. Oh, there it is. Um, and so you could do something where you could just simply take something like a boxer, or um, you could take the audio on your device, like a cell phone or something. And if you take that, then you just press record. And when you press record, it automatically records what the student is saying. Now, you don't have to publish that online. That's just on your phone. That's on their phone as well if they record it. So that's the simplest thing you can do. And they can just talk. And I used to do that with my students. We would practice conversations that she thought she might have um, as she was an architect. And I told her that I didn't think I was the best person for the job um, because I didn't teach English uh, for specific purposes. I didn't teach it specifically for architects. There's somebody else who did, but she said, no, I want to work with you. And so I thought the, the best way I'm going to be able to be this for her is record it with audio. So that's what we did for every lesson, and she loved it. So um, yes, there's a lot of, uh, of things that you can do. Um, and there's tons and tons of tools, and Peggy, I will let you know about some of the tools that are out there as well. But this is the first stage, is I really saw that the students have critical thinking, and it really, when you're teaching them a subject and you want them to remember the, the subject matter, it's very important to do that brainstorming process. And so you can use something like this. I think the, the, the brainstorming sheets and interactives that are readwrite.org are amazing. I love readwrite.org. It's one of the best tools uh, for teachers out there. It's got tons of free quality stuff. It's great. And the great thing about readwrite, I mean, uh, readwritethink.org is that it makes it interactive. So you have great computer 
um, evaluation and things like that. But the great thing is you can do it online, but they have PDFs. So if it doesn't work, you have a plan B. You can always download this. I download the PDF. And if the technology doesn't work, then it's very simple to print this out and have it as a worksheet or something. Um, so the, or to even have it, I can even write these boards, uh, these questions on the board, and then I can have them do it that way. So you always have a great lesson plan. That's what I love about readwritethink.org, is they've really thought about how teachers can use this. And so this is one of theirs for evaluating the audio. So the pre-task is they're actually listening. And I think that's one of the best ways, is first you have them listen to an audio show. And so they can get the idea of what a radio show sounds like. Because for them, they may not be used to radio shows. For our generation, I think it's a little bit easier, and even for older generations, because a lot of times you would grow up and you would listen to radio shows. Um, there's telenovelas, there's soap operas, there's drama. I listen to, a lot of times I also listen to, um, I listen to the radio shows, BBC, and I listen to NPR. I have this ritual every Saturday. I listen to Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, um, the quiz. And also I listen to Lou Rosetta and um, Casper and her cookie show. Uh, oh, I always get her name wrong. <laughs> Lou Rosetta. <laughs> I love those. I think they're wonderful. So you can have them listen to something and evaluate it. And then they can think about their show. They can get ideas. And then they have also where they have before, during, and after listening. So they have these predictions that you can do as well for read, write, and think. They have here uh, what strategies can help you organize what you will wait for in the story. Asking questions. Um, ask questions before you listen to the story. What, how will you listen to find details? So they're still doing. So one of the things they can do after that, they can write their own script. So that's one of the easiest way to kind of brainstorm what they're going to talk about. So they do something what's called storyboarding. So when you have projects like a video or you have um, different things like this, then one of the things you want to do before they begin is have them write a script. I like them to work together in pairs or in small groups. I think it's better because they can practice with one another, they can give feedback, and it makes it a better interesting thing. Um, the other reason why I do that is because for teachers, it makes it easier for you to grade. Instead of having 80, uh, which I've had a class of 80 before, Sylvania, and instead of them having 80 videos to upload, can you imagine, if you don't have a lot of bandwidth, if you have very low technology, um, then you 80 videos at once on your network is going to be very, very, very um, consuming of the bandwidth, and it's going to be time consuming. So I like to get them in pairs, and I like to get, or small groups. Here they're working. This is in Croatia. There's four of them, and um, this was actually a class of 50, I think, or 75. I don't remember. <laughs> I have a bunch of students then, uh, and so they did all of this within 45 minutes. Notice that's how they're brainstorming and everything right now, and they're using their mobile devices because that's what they're going to record with. So when you have it into groups of that, then it becomes 20 podcasts. It becomes 20 MP3s that are being uploaded or something, WM door. So that's more manageable. Uh, that's why I say do it that way. That's my tip. So you want to do a book review uh, podcast or script template. You don't have to do this, but this is an idea. I think this script is one of the best scripts. So this is the kind of frame I like to use when I work with my students. Um, they ask the, the title. Uh, the podcasting tool to use, you know, if you're doing BYOT or something like that, it's very useful to have that there. Um, how long are the podcasts? That's a good question. I say 10 minutes a max usually or 5 minutes. Um, one of the reasons for that is, well, you want other students to actually listen to this. They're not going to listen to something that's over 10 minutes. Um, it chunks the language, so whatever they do listen to, they'll be able to process it, and they'll be able to remember it, especially if you have to answer questions and stuff. If you do this on a regular basis, then that's a great thing to do. You can make them 30 minutes as well. But if you do 10-minute samples and you're working with a bunch of students, it makes it more manageable as far as the memory and stuff. So when you're uploading and things like that, once again, you're going to have larger files if you do anything that's really, really long. 
And that's the problem, is that a lot of teachers try to make them do long projects, and a lot of students aren't going to really do that. Um, and they're not going to do it well. So I'd rather chunk it. I'd rather make it to where they do smaller projects. They really think about it. They flesh them out. And then we can get this all done in one session. Uh, so that's what makes it really great. Especially a lot of times, they may have to do this for homework. And the reason I say that is because when you're in a classroom and you have 80 students or 40 students, something like that, when you're recording this, you're going to get all the background noise. So a lot of times I have to get them to do some of this at home, um, or they'll do a video and they'll take just the audio from it or something like that. If they're going to do it at home, or they're going to do it off campus, and they're going to do it uh, with each other, if they're going to do a homework task, if they only have to record five minutes or ten minutes, they're going to get that done. But if they have to do something longer than that, they're not going to get it done. So for me, it's not asking a lot to, for them to do five minutes or ten minutes of, of a recording at home. Um, they can do the introduction. They do things like pros and cons. They do an Arthur shout out and a conclusion. So this is really good because they've really thought about the process and the format of the of the um, of of a radio show because a radio show always in, has an introduction and it has something like you can even put in there um, the CC music that they did with it. Um, because a lot of times a radio show will have music, an intro, a nice little intro. And it does have a conclusion. So these are things that they have to think about in their script. There are different types of tools you can use. Now, if you're using software, you have a bit of options here. Um, but basically, the two best options are GarageBand and Audacity. Now, the great thing is Audacity now is for Mac. And it is for, and these are audio editing tools. So the great thing about these two is not only are they downloaded, you don't have to have, you can do this through a computer or uh, with GarageBand, you can even do it on your iDevice, which is awesome. Uh, the great thing is if you go now and you're buying anything that's iOS, or um, you can get GarageBand for free. You can get pages for free. You can get all of these things for free. So if you happen to buy something iOS, an Apple product that happens to be where you can get software or apps or anything like that, all of them are free with your purchase. So that's uh, something really great to know right now. Um, and then you can get this as well when you, you if you have a Mac, then more than likely you have GarageBand. Um, but I did get it on my iPad Mini free. Uh, because I got my iPad Mini as my Christmas gift to myself. <laughs> I thought I deserved it. Uh, and it's really great because one of the great things about it is it's really easy to record, but then you can edit as well. And it comes with a package, a library of awesome uh, different soundtracks and things like that that your students can do. It's also great because if any of your students are musicians, and a lot of them will be, or some of them will be, there's always that next American Idol or something that's in your class, um, then they can do some really amazing things. They can record their own sounds and soundtracks. And my students have done this. Uh, when they, and they've really impressed me. They've done um, this on their own time and really given it a lot of different things. So, uh, yeah, hi, Paul and Kelly. Hello, with Alexander and Peggy. We had somebody earlier, but I guess they lost the stream. Um, and so these are the best softwares that you can use, Audacity or GarageBand. This is what GarageBand looks like on my iPad Mini. You can choose what kind of sound, your voice, loops. Um, you can do a keyboard collection. You can do songwriting. You can do a movie, um, the background music for a movie. So there's so many different things you can do with it. Um, this is what any online editor really does look like. It's going to the track that's recorded here. It's going to have something on the bottom where you can click and you can record the track. Um, allow you to cut it. It's going to you can cut it up like a pizza and then you can grab it and then you can drag it and you can drop it somewhere else. Um, so it's really fantastic. It's really easy for students to show. Um, that's a great idea. Uh, a question. Peggy says, after you create something in GarageBand, how do you share it? Uh, that's a very good question, so I'll, I'll share that with you in a bit. This is Soundation. This is another tool. It's really cool. It's online. It's an online editor. It's to make music, but you can use your voice. So anything that's good for music, sorry, um, anything that's good for music, you can use as a, 
um, an editor to record the sound. Um, we're going to talk about podcasting in a little bit, about publishing and stuff. There's a diff few different options when it comes to that. Um, but the great thing about Soundation, it's online. You can use it as software for your computer. But the really cool thing is this, um, is that you can go onto Google. They have Soundation with Google Hangouts. So you can have the students, if they're going to do this at home, they can get together and they can make the podcast on Soundation with Google Hangouts. And it's free. All of this is free. They get to collaborate together and they get to make music together. It's really cool. So they get to make this awesome podcast with music. It's really nice. It's a great idea. Um, and so you can host a Podomatic. So when you talk about recording and stuff like that, if you want to make it um, available and you want it on iTunes and you don't want to hassle with any of that because I'm not... I'm a techie person, but I don't, and I took programming classes. I actually have a master's, and uh, I have a specialization in electronic media, and I went through all these programming classes for Java and Flash and all of these great things. Um, but it's very time-consuming, and I don't like time-consuming things. I like things that are fast and quick that I can get um, to the good parts and not waste my time. So... I like doing things like Podomatic.com. You can go and you can host. I did a lot of 30 Ghost challenges that way. Um, I hosted uh, 30 of them, so you can find those online. But you can do that with your students. You can go on um, Podomatic. So after you do the recording and you get everything the way you want, your students can go and they can do this for free. Um, they can also do things like AudioBoo. You can upload an AudioBoo. Um, you can use something like SoundCloud. Um, any of those three are really good for podcasting or to publishing on the audio. Um, and then there's a lot of things that you can do um, when you edit as well. You adding sound effects may be something that you want to do. So sound effects, um, I, yeah, I'm not so crazy about them. I do love them. The great thing is if you do a lot of this on a Google Hangout and you record it, then you can just strip the audio out, um, which is very easy to do. Then one of the great things about it is it comes to all these kind of sound effects, too. You can get this in a Google Hangout, by the way. Um, but if you are going to have the students make sound effects instead of download them from GarageBand or from a Google Hangout or just use the free sound effects tool, um, you want, you know, maybe there is something where they're doing like a docudrama or something where they're doing like this online drama. Um, and you can do those. BBC has some good ones. And in the UK, there's a lot of famous ones that are still out there. So if you're doing something like that, you may want them to do that. And this is a great kind of pre, you can even use this as a lesson plan for one day if you're working with language learners. This is a very valuable lesson for language learners because they practice making some of the following sounds. They think about what you can use to make these sounds, practice trying to make them. Um, and so it's a creative lesson as well. Um, but it works for language learners. And it's a good beginner lesson uh, for beginner language le learners as well. Um, and then you can go to, you can get different sound effects, though. You go to freesound.org. It has tons and tons of them. So what are some of our audio recording tools? Well, we have something like Vukuru. Vukuru is very easy to use. You can email and you can save these recordings. You can embed it on a blog. Um, you don't have to register, so you just go to vukuru.com and you just click record. It's that easy. It's the easiest thing ever. Um, and then you can mail it. You register. I think you can actually download it and you can save the recordings and everything like that if you register. It still should be free, though. It's, it's a free service. Um, just, so that's one thing you can use if you want something really fast and quick. Um, another uh, one that you can use is you can do things on Voxapop, and then it's automatically out there. The thing about Voxapop is if you do dramas and everything like that, you can do a whole entire class story. My students in Spain that I'm teaching, um, I just finished um, grading them and everything like that. I really love their project. But one of the things they had to do was they had to make a chain story. And they could make this chain story any way they wanted. Some of my students use Voxapop. And it was a great chain story. So you would play one, and then you would play the other. And it's really wonderful. Um, you do have to register. It's free to register. 
Um, and your students have to register as well. So that's something that's um, different. Um, one of the things you also have to do is, um, uh, but the great thing is it automatically will come on iTunes and RSS. And when you are looking to record something and you want to make it ongoing or a podcast, it's really important that your tool automatically will make it a part of iTunes or automatically gives it an RSS because what it means is it's going to save you a lot of time. If you're thinking of doing podcasts and don't look for that, then that means you're going to have to find out a way that it can do this. Um, that's a one of the teen stories, this Nick P.T., very famous stuff. And he does this as well. Um, you can actually use something like Prezi, so they can do um, a recording. And this they can actually add images to. So this isn't going to be something for podcasts, but let's say that they're just going to do one project. Let's say you want them to do one project where they go and they talk about something that's part of, um, let's say that they're going to do something where they're going to record this audio project and it's going to be a, a, a narrative it's, or a story, um, and it's going to review some of the things that they just learned. Well, they can do that with Prezi, and Prezi has gotten all these new features, and I think it's really wonderful. The problem with Prezi is this. Um, it actually, you have to do very short ones, and the reason why is because it stores that as memory, and so then you only get very minimal that's free. I think they're even megabytes. It's, it's not even a gigabyte. It's a megabyte. Sound files. That meant that I couldn't, I have 12 Prezi's, so it wouldn't allow me to do the audio. That's how much it is. Um, but the way that you find it is when you do edit in Prezi, then you go down and you can do this where it says add voice over to path. And so you can do it for just specific ones. Uh, which is good. You can even add background music, which is really nice as well. Um, you can use an audio tool like Present.me as well, and you can add different things for that. You can add pictures as well, but it's a great audio recording tool. You can tell stories and narratives. Um, you can do a digital storytelling project this way as well. Um, you would go through all the same process because it doesn't really matter the tool so much. It just depends what you want the final product to be. That's how you're going to choose the tool. If you want to do something where it's an ongoing podcast, then one of the things you want to do, to do is you want to use something like Podomatic or you want to use something like Audioboo or SoundCloud um, to do that with. Um, but if you want to do something like um, it's a one-time deal or something like that, then Prezi or Present.me would be very good options if you want to add pictures and stuff. So that's how you determine the tool. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do now also with Google Drive um, to have audio as well. So when you're trying to do feedback, one of the things that I do uh, for feedback is I grade with rubrics. You can do great rubrics with Google Drive. I do uh, rubrics are easy for many reasons when you're doing projects like this, and one of the reasons is is it's a checklist as well. Um, if your students can understand the language and they understand what you want them from them, um, so I've been very successful grading with rubrics. Now, there's something called Gubric that you can do with Google and, and give your students access to. The great thing is when I give my students their rubrics, um, when they do it through Google Plus, um, well, Google Drive, then they can access this on their computer, they can access this on their mobile device, and they can offline it. So it's something that they can carry around them for a really long time. Oh, wow, it's Joe Dell. Woo, Joe is an expert on all of these things. <laughs> it's always great to have Joe here. Um, so when you're, one of the things you can also do, since we're doing audio and we want them to listen, and it's really great for language learners, is you can give audio comments. And so with the grading, you can make it an audio listening as well that helps students. And the way you do this is you go to Google Drive. Okay, so if you have Google Docs, you can do this as well. It's now turned into Google Drive, if you didn't know that. You go to where it says Create. After you click on Create, at the very bottom you have where it says More App. So click on Connect More Apps, and then you get options. You actually get hundreds and hundreds of options. The option you want to choose is Kaizena. Kaizena gives you the ability to have voice comments. 
after you download that, it goes really fast. Um, and then after that, what you can do, well, you can always put a link, um, and that link you can always click, but you can't actually um, embed, embed it, um, unfortunately. And then, so what you do is when you go to any of those files, you right click, and when you right click, you'll see where you can choose Kaizena. Open with, you want to choose this, open with Kaizena. And then that's going to give you the ability to add voice documents. So this is what it'll look like. So this is my Google Doc. But this is what my Google Doc in Kaizena. So it looks a little bit different. It has this gray menu on the left side. And then what I can do is I can click here and I can record a voice comment. That's how cool it is. So with this, you can, Peggy, have embedded audio. Yeah, um, that's going to be part of that. And so then what you do with Kaizena is you record it. You do have to make sure that you accept your microphone like you do with most audio things. So any of these audio tools, it should come up with a pop-up box, and it's going to ask you. It's going to say, do you accept this audio? So that is one of the things that you should do is... Um, is, is you have to accept the audio for any of this. Um, and then what you do, um, oh, and then what you do is you press record and everything like that, and then you can mail it. It gives you the option to mail that voice comment to your student. You can email it, or it automatically shows up in your student's Google Docs. So this is how you do all of this. Yes, this would be short audio clips. Um, but you can highlight. Not only that, you highlight this. So I can highlight the area. And you can do this with their brainstorming and everything. You can say, uh -huh, I like your script, but I think you need more description. I like your script, but this music that you have here is not Creative Commons. Can you please find a Creative Commons one? Or what is the Creative Commons license? I think voice is faster to do myself, so grading this way is actually quite nice. Um, you can have students do it as well. Um, Peggy's participating, and maybe some of you will participate too in this upcoming MOOC. Uh, well, we're trying to make a MOOC. Uh, we have 15 authors, teacher trainers. Um, it's January. You can start. And we're going to use Kaizena to give each other feedback on the ebooks that we're creating in Google Drive. So you get to test it out for free if you go into uh, creating your e-textbooks. <laughs> Um, thanks, Joe. I, I think iPadio is really great, too. Um, GoAnimate.com is a really wonderful tool where you can add voice as well, um, and you can make little dramas and things like that. VoiceThread.com, always a great option. I love it. There's also a free iPad app. You can doodle, um, so you can actually add pictures and everything like that as well. Um, that's what it looks like. Um, that's what it looks like with the audio comments. <laughs> you do, okay, and so the reason I wanted to mention this with VoiceThread, VoiceThread is tricky. Now they have an Edu account, and if you go to the Edu account, it's going to charge you. So make a regular free account. Just go to registration and register a new account. It's tricky. The newest way that they have it out there, this is what they're going to do. So. Um, this is one of the things that you you want to try. Um, then don't think it charges. It just it's hard to get to this this area where it doesn't actually charge. Blabberize. Blabberize is really fantastic tool as well. Um, you can add uh, voice to pictures, and the mouse actually moves. Um, but you can do all of this with your mobile device. So these are the, some of the great tools. Um, that you can use to record audio as well. One of the ones that I like a lot um, is this dictionary app that you can use with English language learners, especially young ones, children, and it's got everything that I, I think is really great for a dictionary app, which is you can listen to it, um, you get different examples, you get a little cartoon, but on top of that, it asks you to record your own voice and answer questions and also do your own definitions. Now, that is a really cool app. Um, and that's something that gets students thinking. So they can add their own apple and, you know, banana, their own words that they, they have around them that relate to that vocabulary um, letter or, or, or that particular topic. Um, 
Audioboo. Audioboo has a new interface. It's really easy to record. You can even add pictures now. So there's Audioboo has an update, and it's really nice and cool. It's on both your iOS or your Android. And then Joe Dell mentioned this one. This is one of my newest favorite tools. It gives you, Peggy, you were asking for something that gives you about an hour. You can do this live, patio.com. 60 minutes to record. It's a really, really fantastic. It's a great way to um, record audio. My favorite tool, one of the ones that I love, is Boxer. So Boxer's for iOS and Android, but if you have iOS, it's even cooler. So the way that I do Boxer, um, I'll show you that real quick. You can see my Voxes. I, that's how John Spencer and I work a lot. Me and John Spencer are doing tons of projects this year, um, about six, I think. So <laughs> one of the ways we have to talk every day for all of our projects or else we get nothing done. Um, but you can leave voice messages to each other. You can do it. It's not asynchronous. Um, so it works as a voice messaging. It's an, um, a walkie-talkie app. And I just got a new walkie-talkie app that's free for kids. I posted it on my Twitter. And it's absolutely wonderful. It's one of the best kids apps I've seen. It's free. But it even has characters that children can um, chat with on voice, and they respond back. So how cool is that? Um, and they make it easy for the kids to um, have walkie-talkie conversations with the parents. But this is basically um, iPadio. Oh, wait. Well, Boxer, sorry. So Boxer looks like this. Um, I'll play one that uh, VJ has sent me. VJ sent me one from Romania. I mean, a Bucharest teacher, yeah, from Romania. Um, so we, we say hi to each other. Thank you, Shelly and Jay. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that was VJ's daughter. She's so cute. Because <laughs> we wished her happy birthday. Um, that's one of the great things about Boxer the app. But here's what I love about Boxer. So I'm responding to him. Um, you see how you can see my name there. And if I move it to the side, so I'm going to move it to the side, you have that share button. With that share button, it gives me a link. So I can even use that as a recording. I can record my student. All I have to do is do it right through there. It's really easy to do. It's simple. It takes this much time. That's why I love it. And it gives you a link. So I can have this link all the time. I can post it up on my blog. I sometimes do this and post it up on my Facebook. I do it for the 30 goals. Every time somebody has a birthday or something, I sing happy birthday and then I post it up. And it's free. Yes, it's free, free, free. If you do pay, uh, which is 30 American dollars a year, then you get to have 500 people on a voicemail. How cool is that? <laughs> so you can have all your students in one. Um, Jotel was also talking about Chatterpix. Chatterpix is basically um, what I was showing you earlier, Blabber Eyes. You put any picture, but you make their mouth talk. Yeah, I'm going to plan on doing this with Roscoe. That's really wonderful. It's really cool. And students and kids will absolutely love this. Telegami, another one that Joe was mentioning in the box. It was coming up, Joe. <laughs> um, it's really wonderful. It's like having a Boki, but it's better. And the reason why it's better is because um, it's free. But one of the things as well is that you can add your own background. So that's really cool. You can put them in your own scenery and... Um, there are these avatars, and you can make their emotions, so there's a lot that can go with it as well. Um, and then SQ Quick is no longer in service. I tried it this week. I was going to record a project and stuff like that, my greeting, and it's no longer working. Um, it doesn't have a message on the site. It looks like it is working. So. Just FYI, this is one of my favorite audio tools that no longer exists. It's just really sad because it's sort of like Photo Babble, except it allowed you seven images. And so it's great for storytelling. It also allows you to draw on all these other things that Photo Babble doesn't. Um, it's great for making guides. It's great for showing people things. But it doesn't work at the moment. 
Sock Puppet. Sock Puppets is another one. This uploads to YouTube. It's a great way to uh, record an audio project together, especially if you have two. Um, the other thing is Edu Creations. It's a wonderful audio tool. You can tell stories. You can upload it. You can edit it. That's one of the great things. You have up to nine minutes, and then you can edit this. The great thing is you can do this on your browser. And so a lot of people recommend um, Screenshot or Explain Everything. I don't. I always do Edu Creations because you get your own classroom as a teacher, and it's free. And when your students record it, all of it goes to your classroom, so it's easy to grade. You see them all in one thing. It's really easy. Um, and then you also get to have it on the browser, and you get to record in the browser. And I don't know any of the other free app tools um, that allow you to do that. So that's why I love Edu Creation. That's the one I would work with. You can draw. You can upload PDFs. They can work. You have worksheets. If you do a lot of worksheets, um, then you can have that where you can go up um, and, and have your students they're going to brainstorm, and you have all these um, brainstorming worksheets, and you can have it uploaded, and then they can draw on them, and they can fill them out that way as well. So if you do, you're just doing something like iPads or mobile devices and teaching with it, and you want that where you don't have to just change everything completely, you can do something with education. You can publish all of this on a wiki, um, or you can publish it on a blog. It's up to you, or on a Wix site, or a Weebly. Um, those are all good options if you want to show the recordings and they have the ability to be embedded. You can find a lot of these tools. I told you there's always over 101 um, bookmarks if you go to teacherbootcamp.com. Free dash ebooks and listening. Right now, for Christmas uh, and the holidays, I've given a, a gift. I just created what's called the Teacher Survival Kit. There's 10 posts, and there's more coming. Um, and it's pages full of resources and links and free stuff um, and tips on how to deal with some of the things you have as a teacher. So if you go to teacherrebootcamp.com um, slash survival kit, you'll find it. Or you can go to teacherrebootcamp.com and just click on the top, and you'll find all of these great resources. Or you can go to bit.ly, listen321, class listen321, and find everything. So thank you for coming today. There's all these audio recording tools. Hopefully you know how to start one, brainstorm it, how to um, record it, how to edit it, and also how to go and how to um, assess it as well. So hopefully you'll have a great time producing wonderful, wonderful audio projects. You're welcome to share with me. I'll share it on my Twitter and show everyone in the world your a student's projects. I'd be happy to do that. So thank you so much. Um, I do have a book sample out now. I do want to tell you about that because it's free. And I like sharing free stuff. Um, it's at the round. It's the first ebook that I do with That's Not Me. Uh, publishing on my own. Um, I do publish on my own. I do have free stuff. You'll find that at teacherrebootcamp.com. Um, but you can go to the round. One of the things I'm very proud of is that this book is designed differently than any other ebook. I have tested the grounds of e-publishing um, and also ebooks and, and what they have. So I've taken out the table of contents. It's all linkable. And this is one of the things that I'm going to be showing this year and sharing for teachers. And one of the great things about this format um, and that I'm working with with John Spencer is a choose your own adventure because you can do this easily. And one of the things we're going to do is we're creating a template right now to give for free for teachers so they can give it to their students and their students can take it, this, this book design, this template. They can create their own free um, choose your own adventure book. Um, with any topics that you have. So um, you can go test it out, download it. You get a lot of free links and everything like that. So um, enjoy and happy holidays. And thank you so much for coming to the free Friday webinars. I love being here. We have one more, the 27th, I think, um, is the next one. We're going to talk about using pictures, how to do a picture project from the beginning to the end as well. Uh, so thank you so much, and happy, happy holidays. Have a great, great.